I'm making this video not because I want to, but because I feel like I have to. This is something I didn't want to do or talk about because this is this was a very bad part of my life, very negative, and I just didn't want to revisit it. But there's some shit that's happened, and I probably have some people spying on me. So if you want to spy on me and you want to know what happened, I will give you the goddamn story here. Now, what happened was, those of you who, had, who have followed me for quite some time will know that I was dating somebody before Logan, and his name was CJ. CJ Jaggard, and he was a fucking jack-off. <laughs> um, anyway, CJ and I had a, a really bad relationship, and he fucked me over really good. Really, really good. Now, he had a wife named Emily, and Emily and I spent the last few years in a massive online feud, completely hating each other. She and I do not hate each other anymore. And there are people that are on her page that have painted this picture of me now as an adulteress and a shit talker and an enemy of hers. So this video is just to kind of clear that up. What happened was she posted a video about what happened between her and him, her and Carl. She calls him Carl, and he introduced himself to me as CJ, so that's how I know him. They were together for quite some time. They were on a show called Snog, Mary, Avoid, which is where everybody knows them from. Everybody hounded her, she says, on a near daily basis, asking how he is, if they're still together, what happened to him, and that puts her back in a really bad headspace, and so she doesn't want to have to keep answering these question, questions, so she made the video to kind of clear it up. In the video, she mentions me on a kind of roundabout way. She doesn't mention my name, which, because of this is probably why, but stupid me, I didn't think that it was an issue. And she had said something about how he was messaging this woman and um, behind her back and this and this and that and how I was calling her ugly and saying shit. And I was like, well, that's not actually what happened. And um, I know she wasn't going into detail because the video wasn't about me, him and her. It was about her and him. So that's fine. I don't mind. I just kind of commented and I said, actually, I didn't say that he did. He was lying. And I got all of her little followers saying, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, right. And that, oh, I'm so horrible. What kind of monster am I? Because uh, I was flirting with a married man and insulting his wife. And I just lost my shit. You know, I hate him so much that I don't even have a short fuse when it comes to him. I have no fuse. It's just gone from zero to a billion. And that's it. I'll, I'll, I've just attack, attack, attack. And I'm just like, fuck that shit. And I'm not going to be painted out to be the monster and the fucked up one here when I was just as much an innocent victim as she was. And people refuse to see it. You know, for you people out there, it's one thing to follow somebody and to like them and to want to have their back. But don't be ignorant when you do it. Don't assume you know what's going on in a relationship. Only the people in the relationship know what is happening. Everything else is just guesswork and it's fucked up. You don't go and just attack somebody because you think that you're right. You are not right. At all. And especially when it comes to me, you know, you might say, well, we follow Emily because she's so happy and peppy and nice. You know, that's fine. That's who she is as a person. She's happy. I could not picture her any other way. Honestly, she is just always smiling and hey, I'm not like that. I'm darker. And while I am a much happier person than I, I was, I am more somber and just kind of, I am not the I couldn't be like that if I tried. If I did try, it would just come off as incredibly fake and really stupid. You need to understand that not everybody's the same. If you follow her because you like her positivity, then fine. I'm not saying don't follow her. I'm not saying choose my story over hers. It's not even the same story. All I'm saying is that don't blindly judge and attack something you know nothing about. That's it. Because I am not the cause of their breakup. I was not with him when he was with her. There's a huge timeline here. There's at least four years, if not more, in between this whole story. So you need to get your facts straight before you think you're going to come here and attack me for it. If she and I were still enemies, uh, she has a video where she has this. She says in the video, my friend recommended this to me. And then she links to my review of this product. 
I was like over the moon when she called me her friend, to be honest. I was like little fangirl. Oh my God, she said friend, you know, because after everything we've been through, it's so nice to have her call me her friend, you know, for Christmas. She felt bad for me. So she sent me these beautiful earrings, which I've worn. She bought these for herself and she felt so bad for me that she sent them to me. Would you do that for an enemy or an adulteress, somebody that broke up your marriage? No. Ooh, oh, shit. I'll pick that up later. In my videos, I talk about her quite a bit because I'm so happy to be over this feud. And I'm so protective of our new budding, whatever it was, friendship or just being okay with each other. You know, I don't want to assume and call it like a friendship, but even just being okay with each other. I don't want anything to come in the way of that. And when I was attacked on her video, oh, you better believe I attacked back. And I fucking did. I went nuts and just started bashing the people that were, oh, so fine with bashing and judging me. And then I was like, oh my God, what did I just do? That's old me and she's not going to like this. And so I went to her on Facebook and I was like, can you please delete these messages? I'm really sorry. And I think she's kind of upset with me because of how I blew up. Um, so this video might actually do more harm than good, but I've got to get my own story out, my own say, because I have been involved in this and, uh, just hope that she is okay with it and doesn't get too mad. But even if she does, like she got her own side out now, it's, it's my turn to get my side out. So oh, that was a huge intro of just nothing. Um, if you want to know the story of what really happened between me and CJ, I have told this story before, but at the time I still believed him and thought she was my enemy and I did a lot of shit talking about her. So now I am going to remake the video right now and I'm going to say it without all of his lies, blinding my vision to who, who she is and how she actually is. Okay. So let's get started. All right. Back in my space days, I got a random request from some guy named Carl CJ. I'm not sure what he had himself under. And we we're just friends. No big deal. Just kind of like, Hey, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. I didn't think anything of him. I don't know what he thought of me. It was nothing. Then gradually we started messaging. I was miss friendly. I talked to everybody. I messaged everybody. No big deal. Then he starts confiding in me telling me about his bad marriage and how, you know, nobody cared about him or his opinions. Nobody ever asked how he was doing or what he thought about stuff. Basically, he was really lonely, misunderstood. He was in a horrible marriage and nobody gave a shit about him. That struck a chord with me because at the time I was in a really bad marriage and I was, I was miserable. I kind of felt a lot like he did. So I thought, well, this is a perfect person to me for me to be friends with because we have so much in common. We could talk to each other. We kind of like counseling, online counseling or kind of therapeutic to get it out. Then I looked at his pictures because before we started really talking about anything important, I didn't even bother to look at his pictures because what's the point? You know, I, at the time I had like 8,000 or more friends and there's no way I could have kept up with all of them. So I, I didn't really check on them. When I saw his pictures, I thought instantly that he was attractive because I really wanted a guy that was kind of gothy, alternative, piercings, all that. He had the whole look that I was after. He had way too many piercings than what I was comfortable with, but he still had the style. I never told him that I thought this about him. Never. Because it was not my place. He was married. I was married. And I'm not a slut. I'm not a homewrecker and I'm not a whore. So I saw no reason to tell him that I thought he was attractive and I didn't. I don't know what he thought of me. I don't know if he had already um, been through my YouTube because he told me that how he found me was he found this YouTube video of mine. It's actually on my channel where I was just like, I'm going to count my piercings now. One, two, three. And that's all I did the whole video. And he said he completely fell in love with me because of that video. He told me later. Now, um, so we started talking more and more and more, and I was genuinely trying to help him. He said that he said that his wife was a slut. She was a whore. She was always taking off her clothes and she was always hitting on everything that moved and he didn't know what to do. I was really trying to help and she was on my friends list at the time. And so I messaged her and I said, you know, I'm friends with your husband and he's told me that he feels like this and this and this because of what you're doing. And maybe 
you should stop doing that or think about what you're doing to him. I don't know if you know this is how he's feeling, but he's he's really hurt by the stuff you're doing. I didn't know at the time that the problems in the relationship were all caused by him, not her. I don't know if it was true that she was actually doing these things, but I know it's what he told me. And I am the kind of really naive person to where I think that if you tell me something, it's the truth because I can't see any logical reason why someone would just lie for the sake of lying. So I never doubted him. I was just like, okay, well, he says it, then that must be true. Now, she never replied to me, never acknowledged that I said that. And I don't know if that's what started her hating me or not, because some random girl online is telling her what to do in her relationship. I wasn't trying to be like that, but I could see how it could come off that way. And if she started hating me there, well, then that's explained. I don't really know. I haven't actually asked her that. Um, nothing came of that. Um, he told me that she didn't want him talking to me, probably because of that message. And so he would go to the library or he'd sneak away and he'd write me and then he'd get in trouble and lose his profile. He said she made him delete all his profiles. So he was hopping profile to profile to profile to profile like the whole time I knew him. And I was just like, there he is. And now he's gone and he's back and now he's gone. And oh, there he is. And he's gone. And I just got really annoyed with it. I thought he was hot and everything, but it was annoying that he was always coming and going and I didn't want to get involved in their marital problems. So we lost contact for about a year or a year and a half. And then by this time, everybody, everybody moved to Facebook. So I was in Facebook and, uh, out of the blue, I get a message and an ad from this guy. And I just see this tattoo right here of, uh, the, time from Donnie Darko and I was like I recognize that tattoo that looks like my old friend CJ and I wrote and I was like CJ it's you you know how have you been it's been a long time and he's like oh my wife just left me and the first thing I did was go looking for you because I really missed you and I wanted to tell you that you know I've been in love with you ever since we first met I found you on YouTube and I saw the video where you're counting your piercings and I've just ever since I first saw you, I just knew, you know, you're my perfect girl. And he just went on and on and on about how much he loved me and how much I meant to him. And I was completely flattered at the time. My marriage was pretty much over. I mean, we were just two strangers living in the house together. I mean, we weren't even like together. I had a boyfriend as well, like in person boyfriend, and we were on rocky roads too, about to end. And I was like, well, I'm really flattered. And to tell you the truth, I used to think that you were hot back in the day, but of course I wasn't going like, to do anything about it or say anything, but I did think that you were hot and I'm really flattered. Uh, I do have a boyfriend now. And he said, oh no, no, that's fine. I'm not trying to pressure you or, or say anything. I just, I felt good to get that off my chest. And oh man, my wife hated you so much. You know, when you guys had the earthquake, she kept hoping that we'd hear on the news that you were dead. And I was just like, why would she hate me so much? I don't even know her. And he built up this huge wall of hatred and resentment for her with me. Just nothing but constant stories about the shit that she would say about me and how horrible she was to him and so much stuff. And without knowing her talking to her, I had no way of knowing. And if this guy is coming to me saying, you remember all the times I've added you and I kept coming back to you and talking to you. It's because I've always been in love with you and I've known it. I just couldn't do anything because I was married and just like making me feel like he was really honest and like I should trust him because he actually really cared. So I trusted his word. I really had no reason not to at that point. And so I thought, wow, she really fucking hated me. And I started to resent her for that thinking like, it's kind of fucked up to be saying those things about me. Who the hell does she think she is? And then I want to, I went on my little rampage against her. So that's what started that feud. And it was built up and created by him. Once he did the damage, the initial damage, she and I handled the rest ourselves. You know, I'd make videos talking about her. She'd send her friends after me and it just worse into worse into worse, you know, just doing things just to hurt each other just because we could. And over what some asshole that wasn't worth it, that thought that lying to us about each other was fun, you know? So I did ask him, one of the first things I asked him was, are you having a rebound? Because I know you guys were together for a long time and here you come after me. Are you rebounding? And he assured me, this is not a rebound. You know, I 
I have wanted to be with you since I saw you. How is it a rebound? If it, I feel the same, I always have you. You're always on my mind. And I would record your YouTube videos and put it on disc and watch it, you know, in my bedroom. And, oh, Emily hated that so much. And this and that. And I was just, like, a cross between flattered and, like, this can't be real, can it? Nobody's ever cared about me like that. And my boyfriend and I split up. And I was, yeah, I was hugely flattered by the stuff that he was saying. I mean, he was telling me everything I ever wanted to hear. And he made me feel on top of the world, you know, like I was the most special girl ever. And I embraced it. I just, you know, what? I'm just going to go with it. And I figured, okay, I've known him for like four years. And if he's really been after me all this time and never stopped thinking about me, then I can trust him. This is going to be a real relationship. And he asked me then if I'd be his girlfriend, and I said yes. And within, like, two weeks, he asked me to marry him. And I said yes, but the plan was, was that he was going to fly down here or I was going to go over there. But it would be easier for him to come here because I had my son. So he was going to come here and then propose to me in person, and then we'd get married, and he'd live with me and this and that. And we made plans towards that end. Now, started off great. You know, he, he didn't like the fact that my marriage was ending, which is stupid because he just went through that himself and that I had been married three times at that point. And I said, you know, you can plan all you want for good and lasting marriage, but it's not ultimately up to just you. Marriage consists of two people. If one person wants out or if one person isn't the person you thought you married, shit happens. Life happens. I only ever wanted to get married once and never again. And I got married when I was like 19 and he was really abusive physically and emotionally abusive and he beat the shit out of me. He beat the shit out of my son. So we left, you know, I had to give up that dream of the one marriage and leave for our own safety. Second husband, love of my life, person I thought I was going to stay with forever, soulmate. And he cheated on me and he left me for somebody else. How was that my fault? Third husband, I can't go into because we actually are still friends, but again, Another issue that was out of my hands, and he knew all about it. CJ did. I told him how our relationship was and what was happening. And he knew it wasn't my fault either, and he still blamed me for it. And I saw signs of him flirting, little things here and there. I actually tricked him once. I had a fake profile that I had made for him and added him, started talking to him. And he was online talking to me as me and her, which was me, flirting with her and saying like, oh, I wasn't his girlfriend or his fiance. I was just a friend. And we just said we were dating because it made me feel better. And he was doing me a favor and how she was so beautiful. He couldn't believe she was single. And I mean, completely off the rails hitting on her. And I had told him, you know, what are you doing right now? Are you talking to anybody else? And he like lied right straight to me. No, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just here with you. Meanwhile, flirting with me on another profile. And so yeah, I called him out on that one and he was like, I'm so sorry. It just, I knew it was a fake profile the whole time. I was just playing it and I'm just like, how stupid do you think I am? Like seriously, you know? And we had a big fight, almost split up, didn't split up. And he'd like, he started paying attention to other girls online and like ignoring me. Like he'd like all their pictures and like, oh, oh, you look awesome. Oh, you look so cool. That's hot. And then I'd post something and like he would just nothing. And I was like, that's kind of kind of fucked up, you know, I mean, I'm BPD, borderline personality disorder, and I have a lot of issues when it comes to not trusting guys that I'm with because of things I've been through and just the things that are ingrained in my head that make relationships hard. And he was doing everything wrong, you know, not even acknowledging anything that I did. Next thing I know, you know, he was telling me off about that saying that I was wrong because he loved me and it's nothing wrong with flirt or not flirting, complimenting his friends. And so I tried my hardest to let it go. And then next thing I know, like around my birthday or no, his birthday, I couldn't get hold of him. You know, we were actually together for about a year, if not slightly longer, all online, all making plans for him to come here and stuff. And I couldn't get a hold of him. And I started panicking. Where are you? I'm trying to call you. I'm trying to reach you for your birthday and nothing. And he said, when he got back online, that it was supposed to be a surprise, but what he was doing is on his birthday, he went out and got my name tattooed on him right here on his shoulder. He got Raven with Big Raven. And I was like, oh my God, can I see it? That's like, I can't believe you did that. And he said, well, Emily had my name tattooed on her and she was so mad, but I never tattooed her name on me. It's because I knew all along she wasn't the one for me. And 
so much bullshit, but again, talking shit about her and building me up. And I was like, oh, I'm so flattered. Can I see it? Should I go get your name? Because we had initially planned on getting each other's names tattooed once he got here because he wanted more tattoos and I'm, I'm always up for more tattoos. And he said, yeah, make your appointment. And I was like, cool, cool, I'll make it. And I said, can I see it? And he goes, first he said he didn't have a camera. Then he said that he didn't want me to see it because it was all scabby and gross. And he wanted to wait till the scabs fell off and it looked nice. And I trusted him and I believed him, even though something inside me was saying, nah, you know, but I, I thought, what reason do I have not to trust him? I'll, I'll trust him. So let's do this. I'll do it. And, um, so I went out and I got under here. CJ and then I got love forever in German underneath it font. I designed the whole thing and it was beautiful and I'll put a picture here So then once I got the tattoo posted a picture of it and I was like look what I got it I got it and he said wow that's nice and that's about it and then he started avoiding me and I was like, Oh no. And I confronted him and finally he told me that he did not get a tattoo. He lied to me. He knew that I had booked an appointment and I begged him like the day before my appointment. I said, if you didn't get the tattoo, I'm not saying I don't believe you, but it just looks really suspicious. If you didn't get it, please don't let me go through with this. Don't let me get your name tattooed on me. It's fine. Just, just tell me. And he's like, no, babes, I did. I got it. I just, you know, go and get yours. I'm sure it'll be great. And I mean, he assured me he did get it and it was okay to keep my appointment. So I did. And then he told me that it was because I'd been so sad lately. He wanted to make me happy and thinking that he got my name tattooed on him was something that should have made me really happy. Like a bullshit fucking excuse. And he dropped off the face of the earth pretty much after that. He was so ashamed of what he had done. Um, I wrote him and I said, if I don't hear from you, I, you know, I'm just going to end it. I can't, I can't do this. You fucked up and you fucked up and then you've judged me and blamed me for stuff. And then now this, you let me go and get your name tattooed on my body thinking that you did the same when you had every opportunity to tell me not to do it. And maybe it's my fault for trusting you and listening, but you know, you think you've known a person for so long, you could trust what they say. I've never done anything to you for you to set me up like this. And he didn't write back. And so I dumped him and that was that. I went the next week, decided to get a spider. I can't really think of anything, but I decided to get a spider over it because he's like terrified of spiders. And for me, it was a big fuck you. I'm going to put a big spider over your name just to piss him off. And now in hindsight, I shouldn't have done it because I don't actually like it. Like the legs haven't stuck on the side. Like it's, it's been redone. The leg was originally down here and then we moved it here trying to get it to stick and it hasn't stuck. So I'm going to have to actually, and on this side too, I don't know if I can see it. It's done the same thing here. Uh, right there, it forks off because it hasn't stayed. So I'm going to have to get a cover up. I'm going to cover this whole thing up and then this here as well and just kind of try to blend it all together. But it's an unnecessary thing I got there just because a fuckwad couldn't tell me that he didn't do it. A couple weeks later, like maybe three weeks later, I get an email. I still cared about him. And so I took him back, you know, I was really angry and really hesitant, but I did. And we got back together again. Now to tell you how serious our relationship was basically, even though we were long distance, he told me he was homeless and he was on the streets all the time, cold and lonely every night. I felt so bad for him that I topped up my phone $150 every three days just to ring him so that he could hear a friendly voice and know he wasn't alone. He Skyped with me once or twice at his ex-mother-in-law's house. Um, so I got to see his face. He got to see my face. You know, it was a nice kind of personal touch there. I bought him stuff. Like, I, he loved Angela Lansbury. So I bought an autographed, authentic autographed picture of her for him. Bought him some Batman stuff. Um, he 
said that he was ready to come here and to get everything set up and ready for him. So I booked and paid for a wedding and I bought the wedding rings. I did everything. I also moved out of my husband's house, got my own flat, and I looked through flats with him. We did it online together and we chose a place and I settled on one place because all those other places wouldn't take me. And then when it came to decorating, we both did it online together and picked out furniture and everything and decorated the flat together as well. Uh, he loves watching TV and movies, so I had gotten a 50-inch huge flat screen TV. Um, not, not the new ones, it was like the old projection TVs, so it was cheap, but you know, it's still a TV. Got a DVD player. He loves coffee. Says he couldn't live without his coffee. So I bought a coffee maker, stocked the freezer full of coffee. I had so much coffee. I even still, almost five years later, have some coffee in my fucking freezer, even though I've been drinking it and given some Dorian, you know? So not only did I do all that, but in the end, after we got back together, things accelerated even more somehow. We got closer and we moved faster and he begged me, can I can't take it anymore. I really need to be with you. I have to be with you. Please, please get me out of here. And so I raised over $2,000 and I bought him a plane ticket here. I was online with him, Skype, when I had the money and I said, I have the money for your ticket. Don't let me buy the ticket if you're not ready to come. If you want to just come and visit, that's fine. Uh, just let me know ahead of time. If you're going to stay, that's fine. If we're going to make this life together, I'll go to work and you could just sit at home. I don't care. I just want you here with me. He said, I just want to be there with you. This is no life for me. I can't have anything here. Uh, Emily won't give me a divorce. She doesn't want it, which is a lie because I think it was him that didn't want it. And she did. I mean, why wouldn't she? She has a husband and a kid, you know, of course she would want to break ties with him. But he made it out to be where she was still after his shit. And she wanted to be with him. She was jealous and she didn't want him to be with anybody else. Which totally is not like her from what I know of her online. Anyway, just goes to show what a liar he is. So, when I was on Skype with him, uh, I bought the ticket. He just, please, please do it. And I actually, I still have this conversation as well. I have all of the conversations from him begging me to come back. Tell me how much you love me. Talking shit about Emily. I have all of that saved. I saved it because he's turned everybody against me saying that I was lying about everything and I have the physical proof of everything. Anyway, um, I bought the ticket and a week later he left me for my best friend at the time. There was a girl that I was really close friends with for like five years or more. She used to call me her sister and I really cared about her. She was an awesome chick and she told me later that it was her fault. She went after him, which was really fucked up of her to do. She flirted with him and let him on, but he didn't have to go. And he, he did not only that, but yeah, I spied on them for a while afterwards. And he fed her the same word for word pickup lines. And, Oh, I love you so much. Oh, you're everything to me that he fed me word for word. He told her it was like the same conversation, but with different names. That's all it was. He's such a piece of shit. So I lost her friendship over that and I lost many other friendships because what he was doing was he was telling people that I catfished him, even though he's spoken to me on the phone, even though I bought him stuff and I bought him a plane ticket and he's seen me on Skype and he's watched all my videos. He said I didn't have a son and I wasn't who I said I was and I didn't look the way I look and uh, he even faked conversations saying and told my closest friends one of my closest friends anyway, that I was talking shit about her because I was jealous of her and I, w I wanted to fuck her boyfriend or I was sending him nudes or, or something like that. And that was bullshit. And then he faked conversations saying that I was saying shit like, like a conversation between me and him and he was writing the part as me still speaking like an Englishman because he's from the UK using English slang and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? That doesn't even sound like me. And I'll, I'll add those in here as well, just for a fucking laugh.
So it was just lame, 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 shit talking, life ruining, lame bullshit. And all I said, like I, I hounded him. I did. And I said, you know, you could have come and met me at least use the ticket because I, I couldn't get a refund for it. They, there's no refunds. And I knew something was going on because when I bought the ticket, he didn't have a passport. And I said, you need to get a passport. And he's like, asking me for money for, you know, for webcam cord and asking me for money for other stuff. And then he was making plans to go to this event and that event and go here and go there and do this and do that. And, oh, I'm going to buy my friend this and buy my friend that. Oh, I don't have enough money for my passport. And I'm like, without a passport, you can't come. And I'm like freaking out. Don't worry, I'll get it. And he never got it. Never. And see, Emily wrote me and she said, you know, even if you buy him a ticket, he'll never come. And I was like, uh oh, she knows him. She was with him. And I did listen to her. I did believe her with that because he was already showing signs of eh. And I told him this, and I've actually shown her this screenshot as well. Um, I said, Emily says that if I buy you a ticket, you won't even come. And he went crazy. He was just talking so much shit about her, like, oh, what the fuck does she know? Oh, that, that stupid slag, or I don't know what the fucking word is. He called her a slag, something dumb bitch, and she can this and she can that. And, you know, he'll show her, and he'll be happy to write her from here. And laugh in her face when he's here with me. And don't listen. Oh, if you want to listen, it's up to you. But I would never do that to you. Of course I'm going to come. And she was right the whole time. She was right about everything, you know. And it just really hurt me to think that I hated someone for so long. That someone that I actually like quite a bit. Like, it doesn't matter if she's mad at me. It doesn't matter if she doesn't like me. I like her. And I like the way she presents herself. I like how happy she always is. I love her style. I just like her as a person regardless. And nothing she says and nothing anybody else says is going to change my mind on that. I just like her. And it sucks that someone that I like so much for, I don't even know why, but I, I turned on for so long because of the word of somebody who was untrustworthy and just a shit stirring fucking troublemaking dick. I look like really massive shit right now. I'm so sick. Like I'm burning up. I think I have the flu. That's why I'm wearing like a onesie and I barely threw on makeup. My hair's all fucked. But that shows you how important I thought this fucking video was. So anyway, yeah. He betrayed me, turned everybody against me. Everybody. His friends, my friends. Everybody. Over this. And I wrote him and I said, all I want, I want to know that you're actually sorry and that you could take the blame for what you've done because what you did was really fucked up. You not only led me on let me get a tattoo of your name, lied to me, kept coming back and like just trying to bring me back, which I cared about you so much that I did. I moved out. I got a house. I bought you a plane ticket and then you left me for my friend. How was any of that my fault? The only thing that I'm at fault for is being too trusting and too naive. Yeah, people call it stupid, but you know, it happens all the time. Somebody out there takes advantage of somebody else. So as you can see here, if you've listened this far, he completely took advantage of me, lied to me, mind fucked me. He broke my heart. He fucking hurt me so much. He betrayed my trust beyond all reasonable doubt, turned me against somebody innocent for no reason whatsoever. Maybe so he wouldn't get caught in his lies. I don't know. And I'm branded as the other woman and the, the troublemaker here when that's not true at all. Yeah, I did talk shit about her when he and I were together like four years later after they were split up because he told me she was saying she wanted me dead. That's pretty extreme. And lots of other stuff I won't go into that she's done just to fucking bite at me. And then I did other stuff to bite at her. And then some of my friends chipped in and decided to write, I think him really bad stuff to bite at him. But I got the blame for that as well, which I didn't do. But it was just a big cyclone of just shit, shit shit for fucking years and years and years. It's only just this year, I think, stopped because of me and her. And then now with the this video that she's made, it paints me in a really ugly light because of the fact she didn't want to go into detail about actually this happened, which is completely fine, completely up to her. I know she wasn't trying to shit talk me, but I also know that people that don't know the story, they just see, ah, he was writing this other woman. Ah, she came in. That's why they split up. It wasn't because of me. If you listen to her video at all, which is insulting if you didn't because it means you're not even listening to her and you're supposed to like her so much, she says she left him and she left him for many reasons, not just because 
He was randomly writing some girl online. Yes, he was writing me. It was nothing flirtatious. It was nothing about relationships or adultery or anything. We did not have a single thing to do with each other until she had already physically moved out and he was left alone crying, not knowing what to do in the apartment that his wife had just left him in. And oh, he had to move out because he's too lazy to work and he'd rather be on the streets than to pay rent on his own apartment. So that is a story there. Next time you're going to go and try to accuse someone of being an adulteress or talking shit and breaking somebody's marriage up, maybe find out the fucking facts first. Or how about you just don't assume because you're fucking with people's lives and emotions here. You don't know what they've been through. And yeah, I get really violent, violently angry when I hear about him, but it's because of what he's fucking done to me. In the end, I'm glad he's gone because without him leaving, I would have never met Logan. After him, I was like, I'm done with men. I'm done with relationships. I want nothing to do with any guy ever. And I wasn't looking for anybody. I was happy for the first time in my entire life, just being by myself, taking care of myself, my son, and just didn't need anybody. Don't need a man or a woman to make me happy. I was just done. So when Logan came into my life, I didn't have any expectations. I was just whatever, just whatever. And now look, like we're going on our fifth year together being married and we're, we're fine. We're happy. And I owe it all to CJ in a weird kind of way. Fucking faggot. But yeah, I'm not just because I cuss and I get mad at what he's done does not mean I'm a monster. So if you're going to go and judge me based on one kind of by the way comment that she made, there's a fucking problem with you and not with anybody else. Don't be so far up somebody else's ass that you cannot see the truth because that's just ignorant and it makes you look like a dick. So anybody who has watched this from her page that has come here to find out the story or to spy on me and then happened to find out the story, if you can be like, ah, oh, that makes sense, fuck, I'm sorry then you know what? You're fucking cool as hell. And thank you for watching. And I'm so glad that you stayed to listen to the whole thing and maybe gave me a chance to explain myself. If you're going to listen to this and still try to find blame with me, you can fuck right off. And I hope this and worse happens to you. And I am not ashamed to say that. I just don't think there's any reason to be throwing blame around when nobody needs to have the blame between me and her. We both were with him in different ways. She was with him in a real life relationship, which I have no idea how she stayed so long. That was, maybe it wasn't her time. She left at the right time, hooked up with her husband, and now her life is just perfect. She has everything she ever wanted and she has a great life. So, you know, everything happens for a reason and maybe this is just how it had to happen for her as well. Uh, she's not to blame for anything. I'm not to blame for anything. The common denominator here is to blame for everything. Don't blame the girls. Well, you wouldn't blame her anyway. You'd be blaming me. Don't be blaming me for the lies he told me and the shit he did to me because none of that affected their marriage. And I'm not an adulteress and you can suck it if you think I am. So there's nothing wrong with being friends with a guy if you don't ever hit on him. Don't ever say anything to him. Don't ever try to come between their marriage. I had every good intention in mind trying to help them and it didn't work. And I thought I had found someone that loved me and I didn't, but you know, he paved the way for someone who did. So it worked out for me in the end as well. And I'm really fucking happy with it. Now I'm like fucking overheating. I feel really feverish. So I'm going to go. And again, you know, Emily, if you did watch this, I'm really sorry for having my say about this, but I don't like being thought of that way. And after you deleted those comments, they kept coming back with more. I explained myself and I saw that more comments were coming and I just haven't even looked because I don't want to put that on your page. I really honestly don't want anything to turn you against me again. So I just kind of want to stay. Hopefully with this video and your video, hopefully it'll be cleared up and this will no longer be an issue again. And we can just move on. You've probably already moved on. I haven't because... I see these notifications there and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I have an issue with people thinking wrongly about me when they are wrong. I always have to explain myself and I haven't done this for quite some time, but this, this situation here, I think called for it. And so my apologies ahead of time, but I do feel much better getting it out. Maybe this has helped me as well. I don't know. Cause I haven't posted about how much I hate him for a while, not for a few years. And it's still been around and around in my head. I just, I've never met a more despicable human being in my entire life, and I'm glad he's gone. So, yeah, I just have a great day, and 
I am going to go and just chill the fuck out and <laughs> something something. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Oh.